Now, the 27 member states of the European Union sit around the table and they agree something called a treaty. And the treaty defines the areas where the 27 countries cooperate. They cooperate on research and innovation. And Horizon Europe is the name of the programme that would fund that cooperation in the period from 2021 uh, to 2027. They also agreed to cooperate on making European uh, industry more innovative. And there's a program called InvestEU. There's another program called Erasmus. Uh, there's a, a program called Digital Europe to make Europe leader in high performance computing. And there are many other programs, for example, Creative Europe. And in total, there are about 25 different programs. Now, in the past, these programs were run like individual uh, kingdoms in Brussels. But now the big word in Brussels is they want more synergies between these programs. And the other big uh, development in Brussels is they want more cooperation between Horizon Europe and national funding. And this is what I mean by, by, European, by European partnerships. So where are we today? Horizon 2020 is the name of the current program. And that will finish at the end of 2020. Now, this is the period when the calls are published. So a project funded in 2020 could run for uh, up to five years, but the final call is call seven. Now, one of the things I've noticed over my 40 year career in European programs is that the last call of a program is a test bed for the next program. So all the information I'm giving you today will be relevant to the thinking of uh, the final calls of Horizon 2020. Now, uh, Horizon Europe is expected to start at the beginning of 2021. However, because of COVID, there may be delays and that will be clarified over the coming, over the coming months. So where are we today? The preparation of Horizon Europe started at the beginning of 2017. And in April 2019, we entered what was called the strategic planning phase. And in April 2019, the Commission published a draft outline of Horizon Europe. They invited individuals and organizations and countries to make submissions, and they claimed they received up to 10,000 submissions. And what they're doing at the moment is they're analyzing all these submissions and they're drafting the work programs for Horizon Europe. Now, in April 2020, uh, they entered what's called the implementation strategy phase. And the very first link on the website is this implementation strategy. And what will happen uh, towards the middle of uh, 2020 is the draft work programs will be published. And as soon as the member, uh, prime ministers agree a budget, the calls uh, will be published. So let's begin with Horizon uh, 2020. When the politicians and the commission were debating how would they spend 77 billion euro, they agreed that there should be a pillar that would establish Europe as a leader in science. So that's why we have programs like ERC, Marie Curie, research infrastructures. In Horizon 2020, they said we should have a pillar that will make Europe a leader in industry. So in Pillar 2, they had programs like information technology, nanotechnology materials. And they also said in Horizon 2020, we should have a pillar to address real society challenges like health, aging society, uh, growth of number of people going to cities, transport, and so on. So while health is a challenge, it's also an opportunity for medical devices, and biotechnology. So there, there are two dimensions to Pillar 3, and it was divided into, into these, uh, these different priorities. So there is Horizon 2020. Horizon Europe, Pillar 1, is very similar to Pillar 1 of Horizon 2020. It's about establishing Europe as a scientific leader, and we can see ERC Marie Curie and the research infrastructure is being continued um, very similar to Horizon 2020. Now, the big change is that 
pillar two and three of Horizon 2020 will be merged into pillar two of Horizon Europe. And they're not calling these priorities, they're calling them clusters. So on module two of this workshop, we'll go on a tour of these different clusters. Now, the big change in Horizon Europe is pillar three. They've taken all the programs that were dealing with innovation in companies that were scattered all over Horizon 2020, and they're bringing them together into a new uh, pillar, pillar three. Now, in Horizon 2020, there was a program to help countries like Poland, Romania, Serbia, Croatia, and so on, get more involved in the European program. It had 1.7% of the budget in Horizon 2020. Now it's going to be continued in Horizon Europe, and it will have 3.3% of the budget. Now, they're not calling it Pillar 4, but they are uh, leaving it as a separate program to highlight its importance and so on. So there we are. There's the structure of Horizon Europe. Now, there are a few things you need to understand about these. Now, I must explain the concept of bottom-up and top-down programs. A bottom-up program means that the scientist is totally free to submit a proposal on any idea they want. So, pillar one is bottom-up, and also pillar three is bottom-up. Now, pillar two is called top-down. That means that if you have a, a topic dealing with personalized medicine or a top dealing with renewable energy, you need to understand the thinking and the policy, European policies behind those. Now, it's still quite broad and there's a lot of flexibility in what you can put in, but you must understand uh, one or two things. And for example, in pillar one, you need to understand what is the overall thinking behind the program, the same with pillar, uh, pillar three. However, in pillar two, you need to understand the background to each topic. And the question is, who will write the topics? And you'll see from in UCC, uh, we're going to do a, 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 sec a second workshop on this. Another issue you must take into account is, do I need partners uh, in my proposal? So in, in ERC, European Research Councils, uh, all of the grants are single partners except the Synergy Grant. In Marie Curie, it's mainly a consortium, but there is an exception in the individual grants. Research infrastructures, you need a consortium. And in most of Pillar 3, you need a consortium except the EIC accelerator. But in Pillar 2, you need partners in pra practically every single uh, proposal. So if you're developing a strategy, you need to know how do I attract the best partners into my consortium or how do I get invited into the best consortia? And this is one of the workshops we're going to look at in these series of lectures. So let's do a little bit of uh, mapping. So here's Horizon 2020. In pillar one, we have ERC, Marie Curie, Research Infrastructures, and FIT. And we can see in Horizon Europe, it's practically a, a direct copy, except FIT is missing. So on the next slide, let's see what happened FIT. Now FIT is an amazing program. FIT is a program in Horizon 2020 that funds radical ideas. It gives the scientists an opportunity to try out crazy things. And in, in Horizon 2020, there was an, a really interesting project about developing a sensor for measuring emotion. Now the chances of it working are quite slim, but if it did work, it could open up a whole new area of technology research. Now, in Horizon Europe, this is going to be in Pillar 3, and it's going to be called the EIC Pathfinder. So this is really relevant uh, to researchers in UCC. So we're going to look at, at this in particular in one of the future workshops to see what is required. So again, keep an eye on Pathfinder, and we look at it also in Module 3 of this presentation. Uh, pillar 2 and Pillar 3 of Horizon 2020 and now is now becoming a uh, Pillar uh, 2 of Horizon Europe. In Horizon 2020, there's something called EIT. It's not a program, it's actually an institute, the European Institute of Innovation Technology, and its headquarters is based in Budapest, and it funds things called KICS, a knowledge innovation community, and this is where they bring together 
uh, universities, companies and research centers around areas like health, ICT, energy, and it's about developing entrepreneurial uh, skills of, 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 of individuals. And in Horizon 2020, EIT had no home. It was just um, a, a, a funding, a, an institute that was on its own. But in Horizon Europe, it's part of pillar of pillar three. In Horizon 2020, there was a program that helped companies, small companies, scale up their technology development. It was called the SME instrument. And in Horizon Europe, this will be called the EIC accelerator. In fact, in the last calls of Horizon 2020, uh, it was also called the SME instrument EIC accelerator. 